Hey, I'm Jazz, and welcome to What If, where I try and ask a question and come up with an answer in a short period of time. And today's question is, what if you just told the truth? Now, I've tried this, <laughs> and it's scary. Um, I was presenting, I was a literacy consultant, I, I kind of still am, a literacy consultant, and I was presenting on phonics and spelling to like 300 teachers. Um, but I met Hannah Wilson before I went on stage, first time I met her. And we had this conversation about telling the truth and, and what the truth was. And I couldn't get it out of my head. And as I'm sitting there facing these teachers, all I could think about is what would happen if I just told the truth? Because literacy, I'm passionate about literacy because reading, writing and spelling are my tickets out of poverty. I mean, not like just physical poverty, but mindset poverty. Because I had those literacy skills, I could ask questions and make choices and so I'm passionate about it, but I was never honest about it. Like when I first started working, I, I taught in Essex and I looked around at the leadership like in my county and they were all white, male and middle class. And I'm like, well, I want to be a leader and I am flunking out on all three of those things. So I am just going to have to try and blend <laughs> um, and, and somehow try and be in with the in crowd. So I like hid my past. I lied about my past. I hid who I was. Like my highest and best goal was for someone to think I'm middle class. For me to pass as mi pass as middle class on my arse. <laughs> anyway, I'm not passing very well, but it, that was the best thing I wanted to do. That was the highest thing I could think of achieving, and um, and it involved not being truthful. I mean, my friends have always known about my past, but at work, are you kidding me? Be honest to the pit. No, of course not. What? Do you I'm terrified of what might happen. So I hid it for ages and ages and ages. And so to stand on that stage and say, hey, teachers, I know you're knackered and I know that your job is the hardest on them. And I know that you feel like data prisoners, but I've got to tell you that what you do can't be measured on a spreadsheet. Your impact literally transforms lives. And let me share my story with you and tell you how. And I gave a little bit about my story. And to be honest, I thought it would just be forgotten about. And I, you know, I didn't know, like, I wasn't really on Twitter. I didn't know all the Twitterati and people that were there. And, and it, it, you know, so it got videoed and I got a TED talk and then I got a book deal and then I travel around the world doing all these talks. And it was incredible, but it was also terrifying because it was telling the truth. But the truth will set you free, right? On Friday, I'm, <laughs> on Friday, I'm going to speak to the Truth Project, which is scary. The Truth Project has been set up by the government and it pulls in all the agencies like police, health, education, all the social services, all these and it's an inquiry that's looking and collecting stories from adult survivors of historical sexual abuse and it's looking at the mistakes that were made by the bodies so that they can not make those mistakes again this is enormous this is enormous i mean i like i stand on stage when i stand on stage and do my keynotes and stuff you know, I always uh, I always say this isn't therapy for me. And it, like I've done therapy, it's very different standing on stage. But it, it, there is a redemptive element because I get to say to the teachers who are the people who saved my life, I get to say, this is who you are. This is the truth about your impact. This is how amazing you are. Take it, own it, live it, it's you. And that's amazing. But when I was in care, when I was like a child of the state, the state and my parents, like I, my mum and dad are like the government. Like when, I, so Margaret Thatcher, when I first got to, she was prime minister. She was my mum. Margaret Thatcher was my mum. So, so this is like, this is like my, this is an acknowledgement by the people who should have been there for me saying, we got it wrong. We weren't there for you. You know, like in South Africa, when they did the Truth and Reconciliation Commission after apartheid was made illegal. That's amazing, because like Desmond Tutu got people together, perpetrators and, and victims. And, and the first step was saying, you know, um, we did something wrong in order for forgiveness and reconciliation to happen. It started with the truth. And we miss this so often because we want things to be right. We're not interested so much in the truth, in hearing the truth. We just want things to be OK. So this is this is enormous. And, and for me, I, you know, and I don't talk about it a lot in my talks and I've kind of I've covered it in my book. But I, you know, I'm always erring towards the positive because I want change. I'm not interested in moaning about how crap things are. There's plenty of people doing that. I want change. I'm committed to that. 
But like when I, growing up, I disclosed sexual abuse to a social worker and two teachers and all three of those adults told me to forget about it. Now we could say, we could vilify them and make them monsters because they're ridiculous. But those three adults were, were in a system that was pressuring them to deliver results, deliver data, get the paperwork done, sort stuff out. And, I know, and we can say, oh, it never happened today. Yeah, that's right. None of it is happening today. Of course, that's not true. Safeguarding relies on individuals. It relies on us. You know, it's people and people get it wrong. And then whole bo when bodies pressure people, put their jobs on the line, of course, people make mistakes because they're nervous. So so this is an opportunity. I mean, my abuse, my stepdad's dead. You know, and, and he was uh, put in prison. In fact, well, he wasn't put in prison. He was prosecuted. He didn't get prison time, different times. But um, when he was prosecuted, only when he was prosecuted, I got um, a letter from the Criminal Injuries Board, the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board, or whatever it is, uh, saying, uh, we are going to give you a cheque for £3,000 for compensation for because you were a victim of a crime. <sighs> that felt like blood money. I mean, when I was 18, it was when I was 18, and when I was 18, £3,000 was a fortune. It's quite a lot of money now. Um, I think I spent it on chocolate and boyfriends, but that that money was kind of like saying oh yeah you were a victim of a crime it it, it had no acknowledgement along with it it's like that thing where you have a crash and you, you even if it's your fault even if the other car's stationary you're not supposed to say it's my fault i just totally reject that i'm like mate i got it wrong that's the, i'd rather just stand on the truth my my whole my whole life as a child is about secrets and whispers and lies and i reject all of that because it's i like this woman who the truth project lovely lady and she's been saying, this is what's going to happen when you get there. you will come in and we'll make sure it's confidential. Nobody will know you're there. There's no signage. We'll keep the doors closed. We'll keep... And I'm like, could I just, sorry, all of that, all of that makes me really uncomfortable. Because it's implying shame. It's implying that I've done something wrong. And I am not, I have done nothing. I mean, I've done loads of things wrong. But not the abuse, not my fault, not, not my shame. So I, I will not accept shame for that. I reject that completely. So I, I don't need people to keep it quiet and whisper and because actually the truth is I was abused. It was done to me. It's not, I didn't do anything. I, not my fault. My responsibility to rebuild a life, but not my fault. So I, I won't adhere to anything that implies that. And, and interestingly, she came back to me today to check in with me and said, you know, I don't get to meet, I work with a lot of people who are, have got history of sexual abuse. I don't get to meet many people like you and I don't get to meet many people who are who get to where you are. And she said this great phrase, I'm intrigued by your resilience. And I thought, you know what, so am I. I'm intrigued by my resilience. I had, a, I had a therapist once tell me I was a freak of nature. I'm like, thank you. And you might want to rephrase that next time you use it. But um, when I've looked back, when I've tried to unpick, like, how am I like this? How am I this woman? How am I alive? And this is a this is a journey. I think I think suddenly wake up one, start on the sofa with your fingers crossed. I hope everything turns all right, and then wake up and pitching. This has been a jet. Speak to anyone who spent any time with me, any of my friends. My default setting is misery, completely. My default setting is depression, always. Of course, of course. how would it not be? I I I've just learned to choose to to be how I get to feel. I just learned to choose it. But um. Actually, yeah, she's very about saying this, and this whole thing about being intrigued by our resilience. I, when I look back, when I was writing my book, when I look at the story, when I try and dig down, when I'm like, why am I like this? How did this happen? How can we replicate it? What was it? Was it because I had a granddad? Was it because I lived in this part of the world? Was it because I had... And all I've got, all, the only positives I've got are the connections with the adults in my life, that were the relationships I had with the adults in my life, they all were at school, they all happened to be teachers. I, you know, like they were my family. I, I, haven't, got, I haven't got anything else. I don't know, what, there isn't, I, I have spent so long trying to work out why, and that's why. That's why it's amazing that I get to speak to educators and leaders and remind them. But this this truth project, you know, I'm I'm nervous. And I know that nerves is just, excitement with worry involved so just take out the worry and it's just excitement but it's like it's like the first time someone's listening that, that you know the people who got it wrong are listening that's god that's such a gift that's such a gift so 
that's what I'm thinking about truth this week. These are my themes. I've just shown you this before. My themes for the year. <laughs> and truth is a massive one on there. The truth about you. So there'll be more of that to come. But I just, I, yeah, I just kind of just wanted you to, to encourage you not to be afraid of the truth. Because actually, truth will set you free. It's true.